Let's take a look at our fourth type of problem. You need to know for the the next the chapter one two test. Our first example in this, we got cosecant theta is equal to negative seven, and tangent theta is less than zero. Okay, now cosecant is uh, in terms of our unit circle is 1 over y. Actually, it's r over y, sorry. Um, and um, the r never matters, so we look at the, because the r is always positive. So this is saying y is negative, because we got uh, cosecant is equal to negative 7. Well, if I look at the, uh, the quadrants where y is negative, that's these two quadrants. Now here, they're saying uh, tangent is less than 0. Now tangent is y over x, so they're saying less than zero is negative. So they're saying this is negative, which means these have to be opposite signs because if they're the same signs would be positive. Well, where x and y are opposite signs are in quadrant two and in quadrant four. So where they're both true is quadrant four. So that's one we're looking at. Okay. Guess I'll do it right down here. Cosecant theta is equal to negative seven over one. We want to write it in fraction form. Now we already said that um, in terms of r's and y's that um, cosecant is r over y. So this is r and this is y. Now specifically, you can never have r be um, negative. So I'll put the negative downstairs. So this is r and this is y. Again, it helps to know your quadrants, because you, you know y is negative there anyway, so that kind of fits right in with it. Well, we're going to take these now, because our the first step is to determine the quadrant, second step is to determine our x, y, and r. So we have uh, x squared plus y squared is equal to r squared. y we just said was negative 1, so I got negative 1 squared is equal to 7 squared. Um, so we got x squared plus 1 is equal to 49. Take the 1 over, and we get x squared is equal to 48. Now drop our squared and put a plus or minus square root around the other side. And this simplifies. <coughs> 48 is 2, 4, 8, 16, 48. 2, 4, 8, 16 times 3 is 48. And we're looking for pairs of something. Here's a pair of twos, here's a pair of twos. So those are going to come out. When they come out, you multiply them together out in front. So that gives us four square root of three. Now look at our quadrant here. The fourth quadrant, the x values are positive there. So we're going to keep the positive version of that. So x is four square root of three. Okay. So let me write this down. X is 4 square root of 3, Y is negative 1, and R is 7. Let's go through our different uh, trig functions. Uh, cosine is equal to X over R. So we got 4 square root of 3 over 7. Sine is equal to Y over R. Y is negative 1, and R is 7. <coughs> uh, tangent is equal to y over x. Well, y is uh, negative 1, and x is 4 square root of 3. Now we can't have a square root downstairs, so multiply top and bottom by square root of 3, so we get negative square root of 3 over, and then I multiply this times square root of 3 to 3, and I get 4 times 3, which gives us negative square root of 3 over 12. Well, secant. Secant is cosine flipped, the reciprocal of it. So this would be 7 over 4 square root of 3. Can't have a square root downstairs, so multiply top and bottom by square root of 3. So we've got 7 square root of 3 over 4 times 3, which gives us 7 square root of 3 over 12. Now I think we're giving cosecant up above, but just in case, uh, it's this flipped, which would be 7 over negative 1 or negative 7. Cotangent is tangent flipped. And you got to pick the appropriate place. If I flip this fraction right here, I'm going to have 4 square root of 3 over negative 1, which is negative 4 square root of 3. 
And those would be the values of my six trig functions. And I think I have room for the next problem. So our next example, we're given uh, cosine theta is equal to 3 sevenths, and sine theta is less than 0. Okay, first step, determine our quadrant. Cosine is equal to positive 3 sevenths, so cos cosine's positive. Cosine's, cosine's our x value, so it'll be positive here and here. Now sine is our y value. So basically you're saying y is less than 0 or y is negative, which is um, right here and right here. So we're again dealing with quadrant 4. Okay. Cosine theta is equal to 3 sevenths. Now cosine is x over r, so this would be x and this would be r. So I'm going to have um, x squared plus y squared is equal to r squared. Remember, our next step is to find x, y, and r. So I'll plug in the 3 for the x. So I've got 3 squared plus y squared equals 7 squared. So that gives me 9 plus y squared is equal to 49. Take the 9 over. We get 49 minus 9, or 40. Drop our squared. Put a plus or minus square root around the other side. Now the 40 breaks down, it's uh, 2, 4, 8, 40. So we're looking for a pair of something. Here's a pair of 2's, that's going to come out. So we've got y is equal to 2, or plus minus 2, square root of 2 times 5 is 10. Now specifically down in this quadrant, um, sine, uh, which is, well, y is negative. Sorry. So we've got y is equal to negative 2, square root of 10. Okay, so let me write those down. We said x is 3, y is equal to negative 2, square root of 10, and r is 7. <coughs> now, co I don't remember which ones we have above. I guess we got cosine, don't we? They give us that. Cosine is uh, 3 sevenths. Okay, sine. Is equal to y over r. y we said was negative 2 square root of 10. And r is 7. Tangent is equal to y over x. Well, y is negative 2 square root of 10. And x is 3. So that be your answer. <coughs> now secant. That's the reciprocal of cosine. It's cosine flipped. So that would be 7 thirds. Um, cosecant. That's uh, sine flipped. So I'd have 7 over negative 2 square root of 10. Can't have a square root of 10 downstairs, so I'll multiply top and bottom by square root of 10. So we got 7 square root of 10 over negative 2 times 10, which gives us negative 7 square root of 10 over 20. Cotangent is tangent flipped. So I'd have 3 over negative 2 square root of 10. Multiply top and bottom by square root of 10, so I got 3 square root of 10 over negative 2 times 10. Put the negative up on top again, we got negative 3 square root of 10 over 20. And those would be our six trig functions. <coughs> well, let me um, have my tablet blow up and let's look at our third example. Okay. Third one says secant theta is equal to 5, and sine theta is greater than 0. Now again, r's don't matter. Secant is basically uh, r over x, so that's the x. So it's saying x is positive. Well, x is positive here and here, and sine is greater than 0. It's saying sine is, sine is positive, or y is positive, which is here and here. So in this one, we're dealing with quadrant one. OK. Now secant theta, I'm going to rewrite as 5 over 1. And this is r over x. So um, x is equal to 1, r is equal to 5. 
Well, we have to find out y. So I got x squared plus y squared is equal to r squared. So I got 1 squared plus y squared is equal to 5 squared. 1 plus y squared is equal to 25. Take the 1 over. And we get y squared is equal to 24. Drop our squared, put a plus or minus square root around the other side. And 24 breaks down. It's 2, 4, 8, 24. Looking for a pair of something. There's a pair of 2's. So we've got y is equal to plus or minus 2 square root of, and we're left with 2 times 3 inside, which is 6. Now in the first quadrant, y is positive, so we have y is equal to 2 square root of 6. <coughs> well, let me write these down. We've got x is equal to 1. Y is equal to 2 square root of 6, and R is equal to 5. <coughs> Cosine is equal to X over R. Uh, X is 1, R is 5. Sine is equal to Y over R. Y is 2 square root of 6, and R is 5. Tangent is equal to Y over X y is 2 square root of 6 and x is 1 so it gives us 2 square root of 6 <coughs> secant we're given they told us that was 5 okay cosecant is sine flip the reciprocal of it so that would be 5 over 2 square root of 6 can't have a square root downstairs, so multiply top and bottom by square root of 6, and we got 5 square root of 6 over 12. Cotangent. Um, that's tangent flipped. So I'm going to have uh, 1 over 2 square root of 6. Can't have a square root of 6 downstairs, so multiply top and bottom by it, and then we get square root of 6 over 12. And those would be your answers. <coughs> the last one. Got sine theta is equal to two thirds, and tangent theta is greater than zero. Well, um, uh, my little uh, headphones is caught up here. There it goes. Okay. Determine our quadrant. Sine is equal to two thirds, which is positive. Uh, sine is our y. So we're looking at these two quadrants. Now tangent is greater than zero. Tangent's positive. Well, tangent is y over x. And the only time that's positive when is these are the same signs, which is here and here. So where they're both true is quadrant one. Okay, so sine theta is equal to two over three. And that's y over r. So we've got y is equal to two, r is equal to three. Uh, x squared plus y squared is equal to r squared. We need to find x. So I'll plug in y, which is 2, and 3 into the r, so we've got 3 squared. So we've got x squared plus 4 is equal to 9. Take the 4 over, and we get 5. Drop the squared and put a plus or minus square root around the other side. Now um, we're talking about quadrant 1, which means x is going to be positive. So x is equal to square root of 5. <clears throat> so let me write these down. x is equal to square root of 5, y is equal to 2, and r is equal to 3. So cosine theta is equal to x over r. x was square root of 5, and r is 3. Sine theta we were given, but it's uh, y over r and y was 2 and r is 3. Tangent is equal to y over x. y was 2, x is square root of 5. Um, can't have a uh, square root downstairs so multiply top and bottom by square root of 5 and we get 2 square root of 5 over 5. Secant is uh, cosine flipped. So I have 3 over square root of 5, the reciprocal of it. 
Multiply top and bottom by square root of 5, and we get 3 square root of 5 over 5. Cosecant is sine flipped, which would be 3 halves. And cotangent is the reciprocal of tangent. And I want to choose the appropriate one to flip, so I'll choose this uh, fraction right here. So we get square root of 5 over 2, and that's our answer. And that's the uh, end of that problem set.